Now, our next presenter is a graduate of Howard University, a former Miss United States, a successful entrepreneur, and has served in the Obama White House. She currently stars in the reality TV series, The Real Housewives of Potomac. Please welcome to the stage, Miss Candace Dillard Bassett. Thank you so much, Terrence, for that awesome introduction. So I understand all too well the importance of exposure, access, mentorship, and education. That is in part why I have been heavily involved throughout the years in youth development with my organization, My Sister's Keeper. Tonight, you will hear many stories that will inspire you in some way, but I am positive that the students you are about to meet and the stories that they are about to share will fill your heart and definitely blow you away. Please welcome to the stage two senior business management majors, Nalani Kelly Marsh from Florida A&M University and Antoine Brooks from Coppin State University. When people think of Malibu, they think of beaches, surfing, bliss, and paradise. In some ways, this was my experience. From surfing on well-known beaches, from running into Adam Sandler or Johnny Depp, like that's cool, right? <laughs> However, many of the challenges I faced were cloudy days and temperate seas on my beautiful beach, AKA life. I'm the product of a mom who couldn't quite stabilize her life or her ch for her children and a dad that was incarcerated. The home I knew was a camper in Malibu and my mom constantly moved our home around to avoid tickets and impounding. Just to get a break from this, I would spend nights at my friend's house just to get stability from day to day. But needless to say, it never got easier. I just like to think I got better. Just before my freshman year of high school, the camper was impounded and leaving us homeless. It was like the rug was just ripped from beneath me. After some brainstorming, I decided to go to Denver with my grandparents. The transition from Malibu to Denver was really hard, and it reflected in my grades and my performance. The, but the stability did allow me to reflect, and the, the, the experiences made me realize that education was not, my only, was not only my way out, but the foundation that would create my future. From my sophomore year on, I studied like my life depended on it, because it did. And things really turned around for me. I played basketball in Denver and would typically study between school and practice near the principal's office. Around this time, usually they say, when it rains, it pours. Another, at this time, life took another unexpected turn for me. My grandparents decided they didn't want the burden for caring for me anymore. Distress once more, and going to, I was afraid of going into the system. So I was like, I have to talk to someone about this. So I went to my principal and discussed it, about my circumstances. The principal, Ms. Jewett, she did the unthinkable. She adopted me at the age of 16. And you know what led her decision to take me in was the fact that she saw me studying every day, grinding, and just making sure I knew the knowledge, even when no one was looking. And that's just a reminder to you all. When you don't know who's looking or watching out for you, carry yourself in the highest priority, and it'll speak like it did for me. She believed in me, and she just changed the direction of my life. So tonight, you're looking at a family senior, a moguls in the making winner, And not to mention, an ally intern. <laughs> I'm also a Civitas and CBRE intern and a TMCF supported scholar. So just a note I want to leave with you tonight. Tempered seas are just a reminder to enjoy the wave when you finally catch it on a sunny day. I am thankful to be here today knowing that I caught quite a few with greater strength and awesome perspective. So one thing I want you to take away from tonight, it doesn't matter what you've gone through, you can still be successful. I wish greatness upon you and thank you for listening.
when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. Those are the famous words of Dr. Eric Thomas, better known as the hip hop preacher. This eventually will become the motivational force that will land me here sharing my story with you. I grew up on the west side of Baltimore City. I experienced things that kids had only seen on television. As the oldest of my mother, three children, I vividly remember her missing meals to feed us. We witnessed violence, drug use, and murder. Unfortunately, things would get worse before they get better. As a middle school student, I was enrolled in special education classes. I was labeled a problem child, so much so I would be placed in the room with gang members during lunchtime to separate me from the rest of the students. This went on for a while until I met my godfather and mentor, Dr. Ted Sutton, who was a motivational speaker. He used his gift to empower and expose me to new environments, seeing the best in me even when others saw the worst. He continued to encourage me even to today. Despite being denied by every single high school I applied to, Dr. Sutton, who was connected in Baltimore City, he made a deal with me. He would get me into any school of my choice if I promised him that I'll graduate. Promise fulfilled. 2013, I graduated from Carver. I picked up jobs that helped my family, but they didn't pay well. I eventually started working at a security company, a supervisor. Mr. Norman, he would hold conversations with me about bettering my life. He suggested that I go to the military or college, but all I can think about was supporting my family. He offered to hire me during holidays and breaks. This really motivated me to consider going to school. Considering my grades and my desire to stay near my family, I set my sights on Cotton State University. I felt I had at least a decent chance of getting into. Apparently, I was wrong. <laughs> I applied and I was denied twice. I had no idea what I was going to do. Fortunately, I met Ms. Janelle Harris, an administrative counselor at Cotton State University, who took a chance on me and fought to get me into Cotton. After being admitted, I ran into someone who I knew from my rough past, and she wanted to help lay the foundation for a better future. Ms. Claire Reese Tate was a former teacher from my high school and the TMCF, campus coordinator at the university. She also saw my potential, connected me with internships, and introduced me to vital TMCF resources, provided me with further support and development. All those random acts of kindness, those people who believe in me, have gotten me all the way here to this gala, among some of the best and brightest students all around. Those acts have also granted me internships with top companies, including Under Armour, PepsiCo, John Deere and Kellogg's. My mentality, my drive, my motivation has forever been changed, mostly because of support from people like you all. I'm going to end by quoting my godfather. Sometimes you can be a testament to show that God can turn a mess into a miracle. Thank you for supporting students like me in TMCF.